It's no secret that dating sucks, especially as a teenager. When it comes to forging romantic relationships at a pivotal stage in development, there are bound to be some missteps. While oftentimes these relationships end in a painful heartbreak, this story takes it a step too far in Pinellas Park, Florida. Who is Rachel Wade? Rachel Wade was born on February 27, 1990, to her parents Barry and Janet Wade. Rachel grew up in a typical middle-class home and was known to be a happy and normal girl who loved Disney princesses, reading, and drawing. While Rachel grew up to be seemingly well-behaved, things took a turn for the worse when Rachel was 15. Rachel quickly became an argumentative teenager and constantly fought with her parents over friends, curfews, relationships, and clothing. While Barry and Janet stood their ground with their rules, this would almost always lead to Rachel running away. When Rachel began to run away as a form of rebellion, Barry and Janet would often search for their daughter and bring her back. But after this became a common occurrence, Rachel's parents would resort to calling the police on her. By the beginning of 2007, Rachel's arguments with her parents would escalate to getting physical, and would run away to stay with whatever guy she was dating at the time. Right before turning 17, Rachel confronted her family saying she was going to be moving in with a boyfriend. At this point, the family had been fighting with Rachel for so long that they did not see any reason to stop her. This particular relationship Rachel had with her boyfriend quickly became just as toxic as her home life was. The Pinellas Park Police frequently got calls to their apartment about domestic disputes and violence. Rachel decided she wanted to get her life back on track by getting her GED, her own apartment, and a job as a waitress at Applebee's. Eventually, Rachel's boyfriend introduced her to Josh Camacho, who she promptly began dating as soon as her current relationship ran its course. Who is Josh Camacho? Josh Camacho and his older brother Jay were well known to be players and dated multiple girls at a time in Pinellas Park. While Josh was dating both Sarah and Rachel, he was dating a third girl named Erin Slothower who was the teenage mother of Josh's infant child. On top of that, Josh was living with his parents, constantly job hopping, failing to financially support his child, and cheating on all of the women he dated. Despite the fact several girls were always fighting for Josh's heart and attention, many of his partner's close friends failed to understand why. Jamie Severino, a close friend of Aaron, said, I'm pretty sure he had more girls than just the three. They were all supporting him, buying him clothes, paying his cell phone bill, and they all knew about each other. Who is Sarah Ludman? Sarah Ludman was born on December 7, 1990, to Charles Ludman, a cab driver, and Gay Ludman, a nurse. While Sarah's parents were New York natives, they moved down to Pinellas Park when Sarah was born so they could be in a warmer climate and safer community. Unlike Rachel, Sarah was an ambitious and well-behaved teenager with straight A's. She loved animals and dreamt of becoming a veterinarian. Since Sarah was caught up with her hobbies in school, dating wasn't something she was super interested in. Furthermore, Sarah struggled with self-esteem issues when it came to her body, so she didn't feel worthy when it came to putting herself out there in the dating world. However, Sarah quickly became smitten with Josh and began dating when she was getting food at the local Chick-fil-A where Josh was working. While she was very excited to be dating, her parents grew concerned as she was starting to revolve her life around Josh. She left the high school she was attending, that specialized in veterinarian studies, to transfer to Pinellas Park High School where Josh attended school. By the fall of 2008, Josh was simultaneously hooking up Rachel, Sarah, and Aaron. Despite the fact all three of these girls viewed Josh as their boyfriend, Josh viewed them all as friends with benefits. For a while, the differentiating lifestyles each of the girls lived worked out in Josh's favor. Josh would start his night by hanging out with Sarah because she had a curfew of 11 p.m. around the time of Sarah's curfew. Rachel would be getting off of work at Applebee's where Josh would crash for the night. Aaron worked two jobs and took care of their child full time, so it was easy for Josh to sneak away from her. However, dating in shifts wasn't enough to keep Rachel and Sarah from fighting. Sarah and her friends would go to Rachel's work and tease her by singing to her at karaoke and spilling drinks for her to clean up. But while Sarah's harassment seemed minimal and silly, Rachel took it to the next level. Rachel's threats always had a more violent nature than Sarah's, including slashing her tires and breaking her car mirrors. At one point, Sarah and Josh took a weekend trip to New York City. On the evening of April 14, 2009, 
Rachel was waiting alone in her apartment for Josh to come over. When Josh failed to show up, Rachel discovered he had Sarah over his place watching movies. Since Josh was a no-show, Rachel took her dog out for a walk when she heard Sarah drive by telling her to stay away from my man. Rachel later claims that this threat scared her and she needed to find a way to protect herself. Rachel immediately called one of her ex-boyfriends Javier Leboy. She went over to his house where she grabbed a steak knife to put in her purse. When Rachel and Javier returned to Josh's house, Sarah was back inside hanging out with him. Rachel began sending Josh text messages asking why he was hanging out with Sarah. Josh tried to placate Rachel by saying he didn't like Sarah that much anyway and to go home. Authorities later testified saying she threatened Sarah over speakerphone saying that she was going to stab her and her Mexican boyfriend. Sarah feared for her safety with Rachel waiting outside, so she stayed past her curfew in hopes Rachel would give up. Later in the night, Josh's sister, Janet Camacho, asked Sarah for a ride to McDonald's. During the drive, a friend told Sarah at a stop sign that they last saw Rachel at Javier's house. Sarah and Janet decided to confront Rachel and they broke out into a physical fight. As the fight ensued, Rachel stabbed Sarah twice, once in the shoulder and once in the chest. After Sarah was stabbed, Rachel calmly walked away saying, I'm done, and threw the knife over a fence. Sarah was rushed to the hospital where she was later pronounced dead from a heart puncture. Upon Sarah's death, Rachel was arrested and charged with second-degree murder on a $500,000 bond. When the trial was underway, Rachel pleaded not guilty and argued her attack was a form of self-defense. This did not go over well with the jury, and Rachel was later found guilty of second-degree murder and sentenced to 27 years in prison. Rachel is currently still serving time at the Florida Women's Reception Center. Due to good behavior, she will be eligible for parole when she is 40 years old and has a projected release date of August 30, 2032. As for Josh, reports stated that Josh moved up north with relatives after the media frenzy this case caused. Despite this, he has still been spotted by his Florida social circle in Pinellas Park and reconciled with Aaron. Josh has not spoken publicly since Rachel's trial in 2009. This is a case I feel hits very close to home for many teenagers. It's not uncommon to experience cheating, especially at a young age. This case is a good reminder to us all that someone like Josh isn't worth it. And if there was in this equation that deserved the heat, it should have been the guy cheating, not the other woman. No guy is worth someone else's life, nor is it worth almost a lifetime in prison.